Hi, Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts back with Fanta and Jonathan. And you have got to continue listening to listening to this. Somebody you know, if not you, may get a lot of healing from hearing from these. Because once we deal with the problems, oh, we're going to go into the solution. That's the best part. Listen up. Welcome back. Here we are. Now I'm, I'm going to shut up and let you continue. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, uh, continuing on, like you were saying, though, about, you know, absorbing spirit, absorbing vibrations, absorbing thought forms, absorbing energies from the media, mm -hmm. okay, which is a medium or Diablo. Yes. It's a portal. It's yes. a portal that the spirit, the satanic entities that own these corporations, that own all of these channels, Okay, mm -hmm. they use these um, uh, devices, these media devices, as ways to insert their spirits into the minds of children, especially. Yes. And so, you know, as a child, I grew up absorbing, you know, a lot of Jerry Springer. I grew up absorbing, actually, um, because I had access to it, a lot of pornography. Yes, exactly. Mm hmm. And it all, you know, the pornography started from the BET videos and the MTV mm. videos mm. and the wrestling and all movies, all kind of stuff. And the and all the music the entertainment, the gyrations and the, all the stuff the women do with their bodies. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, that's that's a lot for a time. You know. Um and the event and they're about and and uh you know, without proper parenting, yeah. especially where there's one parent, because one parent can't go to work and do all of those other things and then try to be expected to have, you know, full coverage over their child's attention. That's right. That's you right. Know? That's right. And so that that was a plot. But in my, you know, in my case, I believe that, you know, the single parent home was a uh, setup by the devil to be able to affect children, you yes. know, so the the war was on to destroy the family unit and um, that gave the enemy access into the minds of children and uh, so I, I feel I feel head in, I mean like I said, I mean not only was I a sexual offender, I was also a gang member, I sold drugs um, I did everything that all of the rap videos, all of the movies all of the video games suggested to me that I should be a part of it and I was under a complete hypnosis. Yes. I was under a complete hypnosis, like a walking zombie. And I was just a puppet on the strings of, you know, the, the I guess, the the evil spirit, you know, that uh, you know, look forward to taking advantage of people who don't have a strong will and who don't know God. Right. So, yeah. And so... Uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much my story. Like I said, I mean, you hear so much about people who claim to be victims, but you don't really hear the confession. You don't hear victimizers, you know, basically um, offering up their testimony to help others who have been victimized or who victimized to... Um, Break that to break those patterns and to get the healing and the forgiveness that it takes to get the healing. Because, you know, I, I'm not saying that you have to be all forgetting and forgiving, but for me, in order for in order for me to grow and in order for me to have gotten to the point where I am, I have have had to forgive those who have hurt me. That's, that's the that's key. Me. That's the you key. Know, that's the key to healing, yes. Yeah, because I realized now that it wasn't those people. Those people were being used. They were victims. They had no idea, you know, the reality of the reality of Satan and his demons. And, you know, and they were uh, they were just used as puppets to try to get to me. So Manipulated. I forget them. And I forgave myself after I asked the Lord to come in and change my life. Yes. That's my, that's my testimony. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you hear that, you guys? Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Now, Fanta's going to talk next, but you know, I got to add my two cents to what everybody says, including the Lord. Now, listen, when you are going through stuff and you, you're harboring unforgiveness and bitterness, resentment, uh, frustration, all of that, it's like holding down vomit. All it's going to do is make you sicker, sicker, and sicker. And the sicker you are, the worse you're going to act. And the worse you act, the more people you are going to hurt. So when you know that you have to get that out, you can't wait for an apology. I'm going to tell you, I have been raped. I know a lot of you have already heard this. I have been raped. Some of you don't know. I have turned a trick. I know what it feels like to be used by men. I know what it feels like to be desperate and sorry and silly and dumb. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to feel unattractive and you feel like anything is better than nothing. No, it's not. Nothing is better than just anything. Trust me on that. But let me tell you this. When God gets into your heart and you get filled with the Holy Spirit and that love is, is, is permeating your every being, you will find it easier and easier. Now, you may have to ask God if you don't have the ability and you can't find it in you. I've been there. Know what that's like. You have to ask God to give you the ability to forgive the ones that you wish would drop dead. You have to be real with God on this. And let me tell you, God will see to it that you crossed a few of those people's paths. So he will let you know just how much he did that work in you. I saw a guy that slapped me and I thought I would never talk to him ever again. He was dead meat as far as I was concerned because no man had the right to put their hands on me but my daddy. So I didn't play that abuse stuff. I was in the wind. That was the end of that. But I tell you what, after 10 years of harboring that hatred, that bitterness, and I asked God when I read that scripture, that's why you got to read the word. When I read the scripture, the one that said, if you don't forgive your enemies, their sins, God won't forgive you. And I said, now, if it's that important, to you for me to forgive. I said, now I would rather they, I would rather they died so I could dance on their grave. But Mm -hmm. if it's that important to you, Lord, that I need you to please get inside of me and put in the ability to forgive because I don't have it. It's just not there. I don't have the ability to forgive the guys that raped me. And I've been raped three times, date rape, Mm -hmm. but rape is rape. Thank God it wasn't violent, but it was rape. Okay. I was raped one time at gunpoint. So I'm telling you all these things that women don't get over, you can get over it. It doesn't bother me. I don't hurt from it. It's like telling somebody else's story. Not a part of me at all. That's how thoroughly God heals. I grew up feeling like my mother didn't want me. So I had this root of rejection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God showed it to me in my living room. God told me rejection. And I told him, get it all out by the root. And I went through a two hour dry heaving. Two hours Mm -hmm. of dry heaving, hollering, crying and howling until all that was out and all that was left was a whimper. And I felt like a a wet dish rag, just no energy Mm -hmm. left in me at all. And I also felt like I had lost a hundred pounds, but yeah, the mirror told the truth. It's still there. But God took all of that rejection out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you end up with this new level of confidence, this new level of freedom, and and you're already getting freed up and getting this peace by being saved. But when God Mm -hmm. gets in there and does healing, you have no idea how wonderful you can feel inside. Ah, Man, so I want you guys to pray and ask Mm -hmm. God to give you the ability to forgive the folks that are even dead and gone. Mm -hmm. There are folks that will never ask your forgiveness, 
but you can mm-hmm. be so free from them. It'll be like they came and brought you flowers and, and bowed and gave you homage for 10 years because mm-hmm. you are totally freed when God does it. Who He, the scripture says, He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I'm Thank here God. to tell you, and Jonathan's here to tell you, and Fanta's here to tell you, we are free. And yeah, that's indeed. a work of God. And I'm going to leave on that. And we're going to come back with Fanta. Don't you go anywhere. This is getting deep and it's getting good. God is the answer. When we say Jesus is the answer for the world today, he is the answer for everything you're dealing with, for everything you're battling, for all the skeletons rattling in your closet, all your shame. God is the answer. All your insecurities, Jesus is there to heal. That's why all those stripes were on his back and all those scars and all that pain and humiliation he took was so that he could continually take on our anguish and our pain. And he's still doing it today, thoroughly. And we're coming back. Don't you go anywhere. You can go to the restroom and have a cup of coffee, but you get right back here because you need it. And I know you do.